Thank you for your patience. We now got every, all of our equipment in working order. And I call the November 14th regular session of the Portsmouth City Council to order. And tonight's uh, invocation will be given by Pastor Kurt Culpepper, St. Mark's United Methodist Church. And I'll ask my colleagues on council to stand and uh, then after the invocation, Councilman Bill Moody will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's just take a second to center ourselves this evening in a time of peace. God, we thank you for the officer who you spared while she was shot in the line of duty. And God, we just pray that as she recovers, that that recovery will be a thorough one and a quick one. And God, we also come together this evening asking that you will bless the deliberations and the business conducted by this council. We also come acknowledging that we have just completed another divisive election cycle at both the state and local level. We now pray, God, that you will work among us to heal us and unite us in our common goals and minimize those things that divide us as the elections unfold it. God, we pray that we will be one-minded and will work together to improve the lives of all in this great city. Lastly, we thank you for the upcoming holiday season and pray that all will be blessed in these final weeks of this year. And may 2018 be a year of excitement and wonderful things happening in our grand city. We pray each person will make it home safely this evening and enjoy a peaceful night's rest. And it is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and I'll ask the members of council to indicate your presence by voting yes electronically. And Madam Clerk, we have a quorum and 100% uh, present. Yes, sir. I'm gonna take this opportunity to recognize our new treasurer-elect, our own Vice Mayor Paige Cherry. Congratulations. We look forward to working with you in your new capacity. Thank you, Mayor. Look forward to it as well. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have minutes. We have minutes uh, of a call meeting of October 23rd, 2017. The minutes of a call meeting of October 24th, 2017, and the minutes of a regular meeting of October 24th, 2017. Is there a motion to approve these move, minutes? Move adoption. Second. Okay. We have a motion to approve, adopt the minutes. Uh, it's been seconded, any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please vote yes, oppose no. And Madam Clerk, that motion carries. The next is a special presentation, uh, which we're delighted to have tonight, and Dr. Patton. Yes, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of City Council, I'm gonna ask Chief Tanya Chapman to come forward, please, with a very special presentation. Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council, good evening. Good evening. I would like to first take this opportunity to recognize Officer Angelina uh, Baclini for her gallant effort in attempting to return a 15-year-old runaway home. Although not totally out of the woods, we are blessed and truly thankful that she is in a much better condition and we pray for a speedy recovery. At this time, I would like to recognize her mother, Ms. Jeannie Baccalini, if you can please stand, who is here today. here today on behalf of her daughter and if I know Sergeant Smith they, he probably has um, Officer Baccalini on FaceTime right now. <laughs> uh, 
Um, in support of her, we have provided each one of you um, a hat with her nickname, Broccoli, and um, Broccoli Strong um, with her employee number on it. So you are free to put them on. Thank you. <laughs> Could Detective Stan Alexander, Detective Robbie Dyer, and Officer Sharon Bryant please um, accompany me to the podium, please? Standing alongside me today are the officers that are credited with saving her life. I want to recognize and commend Detective Stan Alexander, Detective Robbie Dyer, and Officer Sharon Bryant for their quick response to the aid of Officer Baclini and their exceptional work in helping to save her life. Upon arrival, Detective Alexander applied the tourniquet to her leg Detective Dyer attended to the wound in her shoulder, and Officer Bryant positioned himself to protect the other officers while they attended to her wounds. The surgeon personally told me to relay the information to Detective Alexander that he, had he not applied the tourniquet to her leg, the outcome would have been vastly different. So I want to thank these officers for their <laughs> tremendous efforts and what they did that day. Thank you, gentlemen. And I'd also like to take the time to recognize her entire squad that responded to this incident, if they could also stand and be recognized. A few other people I would like to recognize and thank, Chief Hoffler and his team, the paramedics, the firefighters, for their rapid response, our dispatchers in our emergency communication center, along with the hospital staff, for their ex exceptional work that they performed that day. Could um, the community or retired police officer Brown please uh, accompany up here? I would like to recognize retired police sergeant G.A. Brown, who ran to the aid of the officer, who saw her on the ground, and he immediately responded and assisted by picking up her radio and notifying us that we had an officer down. So I thank you for everything. <laughs> And can Sergeant Crutcher, Officer McNett, and Officer McDaniel please accompany me up here as well? These three officers need to be commended for their rapid response in apprehending the subject that day without incident. So thank you all. Thank you all for your teamwork and dedication to the Portsmouth Police Department and the City of Portsmouth. On a separate note, I would like to recognize two of our officers that received the Hampton Roads Top Cop Award um, at a banquet a couple of weeks ago. Um, the first one was not able to join us is Detective Max Wynn, who received the Greater Hampton Roads Top Cop Award for his efforts in taking down a homegrown gang in Portsmouth that led to 11 gang members being charged with 89 different criminal acts, including gang participation. So thank you. <laughs> and if Sergeant Glenn Smith could accompany me up here. 
Not only has Sergeant Smith been our hero this week, he has been assigned to um, shadow Miss Baccalini and take care of her this entire week. Um, but he was also recognized by the Hampton Roads Top Cop Award for a Lifetime Achievement Award. Sergeant Smith has been a member of the Portsmouth Police Department since 1995. He was recognized for his years of service in creating a healthy and trusting relationship with our citizens in our community, as well as his efforts to educate the community about the importance of utilizing Portsmouth's crime line to support our crime initiatives. So congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That is awesome, really awesome. And on behalf of council, we thank each um, of you our women and men of our police department for putting your, your lives on the line every day and without fear and with courage. Thank you. This brings us to uh, the city manager's report. Uh, item 17486, which is the consideration of adoption of ordinance accepting at certain grant funds. Uh, Pardon me? I said, uh, okay. We'll take just one break to allow those that have to report back to duty to go. <laughs> get back on duty. We'll come back to order now. We'll consider item 17486, which is the consideration of adoption of a certain ordinance pertaining to accepting certain grant funds. And Madam Clerk, would you read the caption of the ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting $248,175.57 of community development block grant program income and $5,850 of Home Investment Partnership Program income and appropriating the total amount of $254,025.57 in the FY 2018 Community Planning and Development Program Fund. Is in order for us to consider this, is there a motion to adopt the ordinance? Move for adoption. Is there a second? Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, vote yes, Oppose no. And Madam Clerk, that motion carries, which brings us to item 1747, which is the consideration of another ordinance accepting uh, another grant. Would you read the caption of the ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting a Brian Justice Assistance Grant 
in the amount of $9,120 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services and appropriating said funds in the FY 2018 grants fund for use by the Portsmouth Police Department for the Naloxone, Naloxone. Naloxone. Okay. program to combat opiate overdoses. In order for us to consider this matter, is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Is there a second? That we have a motion that's been duly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Ready for the question. All in favor of the motion, vote yes. Opposed, no. And Madam Clerk, that motion carries unanimously. Yes, sir. Which brings us to item 17488, which is the consideration of an ordinance accepting and appropriating certain grant funds. Would you read the caption of the ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting state homeland security grant program funds in the amount of $25,200 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and appropriating said funds in the FY 2018 grants fund for use by the Portsmouth Department of Fire Rescue and Emergency Services for the Southside Regional Hazardous Material Response Team. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. In order for us to consider this, is there a motion to adopt? So yes, sir. We have a motion that's been made and duly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion, please vote yes, opposed no. M Madam Clerk, that motion carries. Yes, sir. Which brings us to item 17489, which is the uh, consideration of an ordinance accepting certain hazmat uh, equipment grant. Yes, Would you sir. read the caption of the ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting a hazmat team equipment exercise and training grant in the amount of $30,000 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and appropriating said funds in the FY 2018 grants fund for use by the Department of Fire, Rescue, and Emergency Services Hazardous Materials Emergency Response Team. Thank you. In order for us to consider this matter, is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Sir? We have a motion that's been duly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the question, please vote yes. Opposed, no. And Madam Clerk, that motion carries too. Yes, sir. Which brings us to item 17490, which is a consideration of a resolution pertaining to uh, certain VDOT projects, Virginia Department of Transportation. Madam Clerk, would you read the resolution, please? Yes, sir. A resolution supporting an application to the Virginia Department of Transportation for an allocation of $670,500 through the VDOT revenue sharing program for FY 2019 through 20 for the Ballard Avenue and Hyman Street improvements project. In order for us to consider this matter, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? Move for adoption. Yes, sir. Okay, we have a motion that's been duly made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? The motion is to adopt. All in favor of the question, please vote yes. Opposed, no. And Madam Clerk, that motion carries, which brings us to 17491, which is the consideration of another VDOT-related resolution. Would you read the caption of the ordinance, please? Yes, sir. The resolution. A resolution supporting an application to the Virginia Department of Transportation for an allocation of $1,225,000 through the VDOT revenue sharing program for FY 2019 through 20 for the Burton's Point reconstruction project. Thank you. In order for us to consider this matter, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? Move. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion to adopt and it's been duly seconded. We're ready for discussion. The chair rep uh, recognizes Councilman Moody. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Th this, uh, this motion, the approval of this motion will take care of a lot of problems, but in the short term, uh, just recently, as of yesterday, I had a citizen call informing me that uh, the road, especially around Lot 4, is almost undrivable. So perhaps in the uh, interim, before the reconstruction starts, we can uh, do some, some uh, maintenance on it. Good. Just wanted that noted, uh, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Any further discussion on the motion? The motion is to adopt the resolution. 
Ready for the question. All in favor of the motion, vote yes. Opposed, no. And Madam Clerk, that motion carries. Yes, sir. Which brings us to 17492, which is a consideration of a resolution uh, pertaining to uh, the Virginia Department of Transportation. Will you read the caption of the resolution, please? Yes, sir. A resolution supporting an application to the Virginia Department of Transportation for an allocation of $250,000 through the VDOT Revenue Sharing Program for FY 2019-20 through 20 for the Effingham Street improvements at the Portsmouth Naval Medical Center project. Thank you. In order for us to consider this, is there a motion to adopt the Move resolution? Adoption. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion that's been duly made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion, please vote yes. Opposed, no. And Madam Clerk, that motion carries. Yes, sir. Which brings us to 17, item 17, 493, which is the consideration of another VDOT-related resolution. And Madam Clerk, would you read that uh, caption of the resolution, please? Yes, sir. A resolution supporting an application to the Virginia Department of Transportation for funding allocations of $2 million for FY19 and $2,050,000 for FY2020 through the VDOT Revenue Sharing Program for the Paradise Creek Bridge Replacement Project. Thank you, ma'am. In order for us to consider this matter, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion that's been duly made and seconded. Any discussion? Ready for the question. All in favor of the motion, vote yes. Opposed, no. Madam Clerk, that motion carries. Yes, sir. Which brings us to new business and item 17494, boards and commissions. Vice Mayor Cherry, do we have a report? No, sir, no, no recommendations tonight. Thank you, sir. Which brings us to the next item, 17495, items submitted by council members. And the chair recognizes Councilwoman Simmons. Yes, sir, just a reminder that this coming Saturday is the Grand Illumination Parade, which is sponsored by the cities of Norfolk and Portsmouth. It kicks off at 7 p.m. in downtown Norfolk along Waterside Drive. And of course, Portsmouth will be participating in the parade and uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, ma'am. Which brings us to item 17496, a report on pending items. Uh, Madam uh, City Manager, do we have any pending items? No, Mayor, we do not have any pending items. Thank you. Uh, which brings us to our, our last agenda item. And Madam Clerk, would you read the protocol for speakers, please? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, City Council rules require a limit of up to five minutes to speak. As you approach the speaker's podium, you will notice a timer. At the beginning of your five minutes, you will see a green light. Four minutes into your remarks, you will notice a yellow light. At the end of five minutes, you will see a red light, hear a beep, and we ask that you conclude your comments at that time. While speakers have an opportunity to address council on matters of public concern, all comments should be made in a manner that respects the seriousness of the form and should not be made in a belligerent, sarcastic, or demeaning fashion. A speaker who fails to observe this basic rule of decorum will be deemed out of order and not allowed to conclude his or her comments. Thank you. This brings us to item 17497, non-agenda speakers. And the first speaker is De Deandra, DeAndre, I'm sorry, Barnes. And sir, you've got five minutes. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Council. My name is DeAndre Barnes, and I live in the Deep Creek Village portion of Portsmouth. I run a nonprofit for youth called the Portsmouth City Cowboys. One of the things I came up here to speak with is the crime that's been going on in our city. I'm not sure if a lot of you know, but a lot of it has been involving our youth between the ages of 12 and 18, including the police shooting that happened the other day. Now, somebody who runs a nonprofit organization for youth, that bothers me because we touch kids from ages 4 to 14. But some of these kids we're not able to touch. And it's for financial reasons, other reasons. 
But one of the things I tell people, when a crime happens, when a kid goes to jail, or when an adult goes to jail, it's not because of what happened that day. It happened a long time ago when they was able to choose that lifestyle. Now, there's an organization just like mine who want to provide a service for these youth, but they're having a hard time because there's not enough resources and there's not enough facilities. Organizations like mine provide track, basketball, football, cheerleading, and t-ball. One of the programs that we have coming up is basketball. Last year, we had over 165 kids in our program, and we're the highest in the city. And we're the highest in the city because we have to pay for facilities. A year, on a yearly basis, we're spending $4,300 on just facilities from renting churches and things of that nature. Imagine if we could use what the city has, the resources the city has. I can cut registration in half and touch more kids. And a lot of those kids, they grew up like me. When I was younger, I grew up in Dale's home. I didn't have a lot of things to do, but I had people who kept me out of trouble and kept me in places to make sure that I was able to stay out of trouble. And because of that, I was able to go to school. I got two degrees. I run a nonprofit organization. And some of you don't know, I even ran for the school board this year, last year. We need to make sure we are able to provide our children a service so that they can stay out of trouble. I think a lot of these kids, mainly between the 12 and 18 um, age group, those are the kids we didn't get to touch because our program just started in 2014. And we've been able to make some differences in the city, but we're not able to touch everybody. And like I said, that's because of a lot of different reasons. So the reason I'm coming up here speaking is because I'm really asking for your help to help organizations like mine to make it easier so we can touch these kids. Because if I have to charge, if I can get 165 kids at $100, imagine what I can do if I can charge them $30. But right now I'm not able to because I don't have the resources, I don't have the space, and I don't have the money to do it. The good thing is, is that everything that happened from today and, it, and yesterday is in the past. That's old chapters in the book. Well, we can build a new chapter tonight. We can start, we can work together. And I'm hoping you guys can be the city council that start that new chapter with organizations like mine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And the chair recognizes Dr. Whitaker. Yes, uh, Mr. Barnes. First of all, um, let me thank you for the work that you do in the community. Uh, many of us are very aware of what you do and the sacrifices um, that you make and the young folks that you reach. Um, Dr. Patton, could you, if, if you have the information, I know that um, there are funds available for um, nonprofit organizations. If, if you could, and I believe that application process is coming up uh, in December, can you just inform the public of that again? Yes, uh, Mayor Weissman and members of council, I was going to share, I'll share that, um, Dr. Whitaker, and we have been advertising for our neighborhood incentive grants, which um, we have advertised for now for about six weeks. We've only had five organizations to uh, come forward to apply. An organization or group can get up to $5,000 for whatever their project or program or whatever they put forward for consideration. In addition, um, in our budget, we have organizational uh, support grants. And that process um, by the, um, uh, Mrs. Kelly, mid-December, applications will go out, advertisements uh, will go out so that groups like yours and others can put in your proposal, fill out the application, and be considered for uh, funding. Um, there are hundreds of thousands of dollars of which over the scope of groups that we have worked with over the past have received. So I will ask Mr. Pace if we, he will get your contact information and, and your email address and we'll send that directly to you on tomorrow so you will know, um, particularly the one that uh, we're working on right now to put in a proposal. Okay. All righty. And uh, you. Dr. Patton, is that a uh, link to the uh, funds, is that on the website, and if so? <laughs> yes, it's on the city's website. So you can actually go to the city's website and you will see the application package there. But I'll make sure you're gonna get it because Mr. Pace is gonna get your number, your email address, and send it to you, okay? okay? And, and Dr. Patton, just for the public to know, um, 
can someone on staff let us know the link to that site so that because um, I don't is it on the front page yes I'll have mr. pace to um, provide that information if you would just check it and let us know immediately thank you thank you thank you and mr. pace will meet you in the back the next speaker is mr. Steve Carroll and sir you have five minutes Evening, Mayor, members of council. My comments re revolve around an issue that has gone around the city council for quite a while, but my real point goes way beyond the Confederate monument. So I've got a quiz for four members of the city council, and this is serious. I'm not joking, and I'm not uh, being sarcastic. And at the end of the quiz, I'll make my point. Did the monument, and there's 23 questions here, I believe, 24. Did the monument murder the kid at the sub shop on County Street? Did the monument murder the guy sitting in front of the convenience store by Virginia Avenue? Did the monument murder the port and Norfolk woman because she witnessed a drug deal? Did the monument commit a single one of the 26 homicides in 2015? Has a memorial ever abused or neglected a Portsmouth child? Was it our monument that mercilessly shot a Navy father and his pregnant wife repeatedly over by City Park Avenue? Was it our monument that viciously shot one of our beloved police officers? and nearly took her life. Is it our monument that leaves drug and prostitution paraphernalia strewn on our streets and neighborhoods? Is it the monument that leaves volumes of beer and liquor bottles strewn along Rodman Avenue? Is it the monument that sells crack to our 13-year-old sons and daughters? and enslaves them to an animalistic life of addiction, prostitution, and crime? Was it the monument that ran the heroin ring out of a downtown hotel? Is it the monument that stands in front of our church pulpit spewing divisiveness instead of peace and harmony? Was it our monument that stood in God's pulpit and treated God to damn America? Was it the monument that sued the impoverished cities of Port citizens of Portsmouth for $98 million for a backroom hotel deal that went sour? Has our monument ever been investigated and condemned by a grand jury for violating state law and state fiscal conduct rules? Has our monument ever been indicted by a grand jury? Has our monument ever marched, and I, and I for, forgive me, gentlemen I, I wasn't going to do this tonight but I will do it since most of the police officers have left because this hurts did our monument ever march down a street chanting pigs in a blanket fry them like bacon has our monument ever illegally blocked interstate 264 Was it our monument that mocked our law enforcement personnel when they tried to make a legitimate traffic stop? Has our monument ever bribed a public official? Has our monument ever physically and verbally assaulted Portsmouth school teachers? I feel like the monument, and I understand that there are people that I think a lot of in this room tonight who may feel differently about the monument. You know where I stand on the monument. I've said it before. I do have a very proud Confederate heritage that I make no apologies for. And I also said in the same breath that I love that flag as well because I have one of those flags sitting at home that covered my dad's remains. And don't let anyone ever desecrate that flag in front of me. Never. 
It's been used as political football and you need to stop it. These are the problems that you need to address as elected officials. You need to take your jobs seriously because I don't come up here wasting my time for no good reason. I care about this city. I care about everyone in it. And I don't care what color you are. I don't care what creed you are, but you need to stop it. And I respectfully request that you heed my concerns in this exam. Thank you, sir. Your time is up. The next uh, speaker is Sergeant Major Clyde Toller. And, sir, you have five minutes. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Member Council, Sorry, no, I'm just waiting to say. And the City Attorney. Clyde told her, 1029 Blair Street. I passed some up to you. I wanted to end up at Miss White because she's going to keep it. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, first, I take my hat off to the police department. This was a great thing they did, and I'm, re I'm very proud of how they respond to take care of the young lady. And I wish her well. If she keep her hands in God's hands, she'll be all right. I know what it is to be wounded. I know what it is to see your life look like fading away. So I know how the people of this city feel, because we all wish her the best. Now, back to Veteran Day. As you know, we have a lot of veterans in this city. Now, we're not going to go World War I now, but we'll start at World War II. You can start with me if you want. But anyway, I think the mayor, this was a great thing you people did in Portsmouth. Now, you know, I've been for, since 1984, I've been going to begin to be representing Portsmouth. Top style, March, also drove. Now I drive because I'm too old to walk. 91, you can't be walking over three and four miles no more. But anyway, this was a great thing y'all did over here. We, Branch 37, the Marine, Navy, and the Coast Guard, we represented Portsmouth's good. They really gave us an outstanding hand when we came to the grandstand. And I think this was very good. I didn't see nobody else there from Portsmouth, but we were there. We upheld Portsmouth, and I got a lot of calls about it. We were on TV like I saw you on TV here, too. All of this was great, but this is the last I guess I'm going to get this trophy for Shipmate of the Year for North Carolina, West Virginia, D.C., Maryland, and Delaware. This is a beautiful one here, so I decide to give this to the city so you can put it and keep it and put it with the flag that I gave you for the first flag of Afghanistan with my grandson. <laughs> was my great-grandson was a pilot, helicopter pilot in Afghanistan, the first flag that they put up there in, in Iraq. That's what it was. I think Miss White got that, too. But anyway, this is great. Now, you must remember, here Thanksgiving is. There's a lot of people that need. So I'm hoping that each one of you will find somebody that need and give them something. For Thanksgiving. Now be careful, watch some of them because they go right around the corner and try to sell it, and you walk around there and try to sell it to you. So, I mean, that's just the way it goes. That's life. But they do these things. But anyway, I take care of four schools in this city. I give a full cooked dinner, turkey dinner. Now, the schools already done responded to me. I do it in Portsmouth and I do it in Chesapeake. They have already responded. They have families that's in need. And they will pick them up. I'll pick them up. I'll deliver them to the school. They'll deliver them to the people. I don't have to know your name or anything like that. That's not important to me. I just want to make sure that I can give back something to somebody that maybe don't have nothing. Now, the reason why I buy them cook, because, you know, some I ain't chalking on no you women, so don't throw nothing at me and get mad. But, you know, some of the women can't cook, and neither can men. So if it's already done, heat it. You better off. But anyway, I would do this Christmas again. And you know, we're coming up Christmas, you only got one meeting. So let's get things together and have this thing set up. 
so that we'll be able to have something right here for Christmas. Ms. White put up the Christmas tree. You can't say you ain't got it. I gave you one, didn't <laughs> So let's have a Christmas tree and decorate the place. But it's nice seeing all you, and I want to take all my hat to those that lost and those that won. So don't get mad. Let's all stick together and still go along with the city and do the best we can. Because somebody going to win, somebody going to lose. But if we stick together, we all will win. So let's don't go around getting mad because your person didn't win or didn't lose. Better luck next time. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Donna Sai. And ma'am, you have five minutes. Good evening. My name is Donna Sai, and I live in the Woodbine Farms neighborhood. At last night's work session, there were reports on a five-year forecast on recommendations from the Finance Officers Association to do long-term financial planning. The planning is to align capacity with service objectives. I wonder about the ability of staff to coordinate and plan the needs of the city with realistic objectives. After witnessing the election results last Tuesday, I wonder if the people of Portsmouth want to self-govern. It seems they trust the people they elect to think for them. I don't. Here are some things that don't make sense to me. For the year 2017, real estate assessment was positive 1%. Other local taxes was positive 2%. Personal property tax was minus 12%. The reason for that was the loss of personal property tax from the Virginia Port Authority and Virginia International Gateway Incorporated Facilities Lease Agreement. On 1010, there was a resolution to make a loan agreement for $3.4 million to cover the loss of rent money interest free. The five year forecast shows expenses will be greater than revenues for the years 2019 through 20. 22. Revenues will be greater than expenses for the year 2023. For the year 2017, the final budget results unaudited for the general fund expenses were greater than revenue of minus $1.3 million. Total debt for the year 2017 was over $553 million. The general fund debt is over $271 million. It includes debt of 6.1 million qualified Zone Academy bond issued in October the 2016 for the school interest free. Total city debt service for the year 2018 payments will be over $50 million. The long-term fixed cost for 2018 for the city's general fund will be over $52 million. The same amount has to be in the budget for the public schools budget for 2018. There was also a presentation about the bond refunding. The city wants to buy back old bonds and buy new bonds at a lower interest rate to save money. It is anticipated that the city will save $12 million, $7 million will be put in the general fund and five million will be put in the self-supporting utility fund. And let's review some history. <coughs> At the city council public hearing on 1024, 17-465 resolution contracted a bond debt of over $4 million to finance the repair of certain public schools and equipment and the cost of issuing the bond. On September the 12th, there was a report that listed the challenges regarding Portsmouth high debt level and high pension level. It also listed the revenue that was expected but not received for the year 2017. Where is the bond debt of $4 million listed in last night's work session? Where is the expected revenue but not received listed in the presentation last night? Something is not right. The problem is lack of communication with the people by the elected. The elected do not know what is going on, therefore they can't communicate 
due to lack of knowledge. Thanks for listening. Thank you, ma'am. And the last speaker is Mark Gadolgi Yatrosky. And, sir, you have five minutes. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, honorable members of council, and fellow interested parties. First, let me say happy Thanksgiving to all of all of us who observe that holiday. It was always a big family holiday in, in the Atrovsky family. And I hope that it will be a happy time for all of you. I want to take off my citizen's hat and put on my customer's hat. And maybe that will give me an advantage because I was told that the customer is always right. So as a customer of the city's recycling system, I want you to tell you I want you to know that I'm not a happy customer. The conversations surrounding the recycling news that appeared in the paper today um, that occurred in the room adjacent to this chamber involves some statements with which I disagree. Burning combustible material that would otherwise be recycled does not, by my definition, constitute recycling. It constitutes a lost opportunity to reclaim material that could be repurposed with appropriate processing. Glass does not burn particularly well. Aluminum either. But aluminum can be melted down and reused. So I don't believe the diversion of our recycled material to the wheel abrader plant is the highest and best use of those materials that I and other customers of the system have set aside for recycling rather than destruction. I am concerned that this contract ended without a replacement being in place so that there would be a seamless transition. When contracts are signed, they have expiration dates on them. So this should not have surprised anybody. I am curious as to why that date was not on somebody's watch list and why the preparations for entering into a new contract weren't sufficiently advanced to prevent this interruption in service. And I am disappointed that as a customer, the city did not share the information with me and my fellow customers in the city. Because there are places that recycle materials. You can drive up and drop your recyclables off. Some of them provide cash payments for certain types of recycled materials. And had I known when I was pushing my blue card out to the curb that we were in a non-covered status for recycled materials, I might have done something else with the material besides set it out for destruction. I would like the next time that the city ombudsperson reports for her to say that this complaint from a customer has been followed up and these are the results, rather than saying there were X number of non-agenda speakers and none of them required staff follow-up. I require 
staff follow-up. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And Dr. Whitaker. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Godolsky, Yatrowski, um, I share your same concerns. Um, in the previous meeting, we discussed that issue, and the city manager uh, is going to follow up um, with us at our next meeting, because I, too, I know there are some environmental uh, issues there with recycling, but there are also economic issues because of the increased tipping costs that we will have to pay for that. So there will be follow-up. Thank you, sir. Thank and you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our meeting. The meeting is adjourned.